Could a vaccine prevent cancer? In our last episode, I talked about the future of vaccine delivery, looking at alternatives to hypodermic needles, as well as different ways that we can make vaccines more robust so they could survive at higher temperatures. Today, I want to concentrate on a list of diseases that we either have no vaccine for or the vaccines we have are limited in their effectiveness. So let's start with influenza. But Jonathan, I hear you say, we have flu shots. I get one every year. I got it just the other day. What are you talking about? We do have flu shots, but they are very limited in their usefulness. For one thing, they only contain certain strains of the flu each year. Doctors get together and they look at predictive models and they make an educated guess over which strains are gonna be particularly troublesome. And those are the ones that are included in that year's flu vaccine. But sometimes you might encounter a different strain of flu and then you're out of luck. Also, the flu virus mutates constantly. So eventually, the flu virus changes so much your immune system can't even recognize it, and you have to start all over again building up that immune response. But what if you could develop a vaccine that works against multiple strains of the virus for multiple years? That's the goal scientists are working on right now. They're looking at a certain chain of proteins that remains consistent from mutation to mutation. If they can develop a vaccine that looks for that specific chain of proteins, it could protect against all flu strains for more than a year. Think of it, a multi-year universal flu vaccine. Or how about another disease that was in the news recently, Ebola. There are a lot of companies working on Ebola vaccinations right now. One of them, Merck, actually developed a vaccine with a 100% efficacy rating. Now, it's still going to take time before that or some other vaccine gets approved for widespread use, but the results so far have been very promising. Now let's get to the really tricky diseases, like malaria. Malaria is caused by a parasite that lives inside a mosquito. The parasite's life cycle is pretty complex, which also means our body's immune response to the parasite is complicated and difficult to understand. This makes developing a vaccine for malaria really challenging. But scientists are hard at work trying to solve this problem using a technique called DNA vaccines to create something that would actually be effective in preventing malaria. Or how about cancer? There are certain diseases that are correlated with cancer forming later on, so if we can stop those diseases from spreading in the first place, we might be able to cut back on cancer rates. And we've already seen this happen. HPV, which is a virus that's responsible for 70% of the cases of cervical cancer, can be prevented with a vaccine. On a similar note, we could also use vaccines to help prevent the onset of Alzheimer's. Now, Alzheimer's itself is a very complicated process, but one known cause of the disease is the formation of protein knots called tau deep within the brain. By developing a vaccine that lets the body's immune system target these proteins, we might be able to prevent Alzheimer's from ever developing in the first place. Personally, I find all of this to be really inspirational, and I love the thought that future generations will suffer fewer of the diseases that are prevalent in our time. You can't get more forward-thinking than that. And I've got a question for you guys this week. What are some of your ideas on ways to prevent and treat illness around the globe? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring our show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that little like button, join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to the channel, and then to continue this inspirational train, check out these other videos right over here. <laughs>